Good evening all. Good evening Steve Ash, Rubber Dub Wood, Paul Smith, Shay, BB Turning and Leroy. Good evening. Could you just let me know whether the sound is okay and whether you can see me? Hello, <laughs> is there anybody there? Good evening, oh good evening. Oh that's excellent. Evening Martin, how are you? Thank you sir. Hi Dave. Fred, good evening. Evening Brian. Evening Leroy, I've already said hello to you Leroy from Ohio and hello again. <coughs> Mr Martel, good evening to you. Oh that's good, thanks very much Dave. It's nice to know the sound's okay. Hello Mr Keith, how are you? Nice to see you mate. Obviously got nothing better to do. <laughs> Hello Frederick, how are you? Good evening, thank you. Oh that's excellent. I'm surprised there's anybody here tonight actually because I'm sure most of you realise that, good evening Mr Stratton, how are you? That Jimmy Clues has been interviewed tonight and I'd like to have seen him as well. So. Uh, I'm extremely humbled by the fact I've got people here tonight at all. Good evening, Thomas Kroll, Tony Harvey, good evening, Bruce. Piggy Sticks, good evening, how are you? <laughs> Martin has said, is the shirt as white as your beard or vice versa? Well, I think they're both the same, actually. <laughs> but unfortunately, the beard is natural. Good evening Chris, how are you? Nice to see you, thanks for coming. Hello Simon, Richard Stubbs, good evening, how are you? I hope everybody is staying safe. Oh, I must do one thing, um, hope you're still there Shay. Shay asked me not to clear up and it's basically a dare, so I'm going to move one of my cameras just to uh, show everybody that in actual fact I do make a mess and I've kept a mess, especially for you Shay, I hope you appreciate it. <clears throat> there you go, there's all the shavings from a couple of sycamore bowls that I did. And Shay didn't think that I would keep it for tonight, but I did. I hope you saw that, Shay. And if you didn't, that's disgraceful. <laughs> All right, Keith. Yeah, you go and watch Jimmy Clues, mate. Thank you very much. I was, I'm surprised it's not a mass exodus, actually. <laughs> Uh, good evening, Shay. Shay Lenehan, how are you? Nice to see you, mate. You can watch Jimmy Clues any... <laughs> I am absolutely amazed that anybody's turned up tonight, to be honest with you. Um, there you go. Hello, Grant. Good evening, how are you? Well, tonight... Um, it's nearly half past seven, so we'll start. Um, basically, tonight what I'm doing is uh, going through my methods of uh, finishing the bowl that I did two weeks ago on the last live stream. Now, a few things have happened to it. It's cracked quite badly, which I filled with CA and sawdust. And uh, the bark that flew off during my demo there, I've managed to find some of it, apart from this bit here. What this, um, I was asked by a few people who were here two weeks ago and also on social media about showing how I finish. Well, what I intend to do is to go through the methods that I use and there are obviously a load of other methods 
The thing is it's moved quite a bit because it's been a fortnight and it wasn't finished. So what I'm going to do, if it's going to explode, it'll explode. Um, but I'll go through, hopefully it'll be of, of use to some of you newer turners um, with the methods I use. And it's basically scraping as opposed to using a gouge, but shear scraping and negative rake scraping. And uh, I'll talk you through the uh, problems that you've got to be aware of and be wary of and uh, if I'm not wary enough it'll go flying but then again that's not a problem. Kevin Newman, good evening Kevin, how are you? Nice to see you my friend. Roger, you're interested to get to know more. Okay, um, as I say it's not uh, going to be a turning video as such, it's basically methods of, of finishing off a bowl like this. Um, this is not going to be a a beautiful piece at the end but we'll see if we can make it look better and the thing is again for the newer turners if you turn something like this and it moves on you and it's not going to be what you would call a showpiece it doesn't matter don't throw it away don't burn it work on it and practice on it and you can practice different techniques different finishes different sanding techniques etc so every piece of wood that you've turned is a an opportunity to gain more experience Good evening, Mr. Fennell. How are you, Wayne? Nice to see you. Evening, Richard. How are you? And Silk, good evening. Uh, John Foster, good evening to you too. One thing I'd like to ask, oh, Dave Rothwell, good evening. Howdy, how are you? <laughs> my good friend Dave from, uh, from Canada. Give my love to Fee, won't you? And uh, good evening, Andy. Andy Best, good evening, sir. Um, what, I, what I intend to do is to uh, just carry on in my normal way and uh, we'll just see what transpires and I'll talk you through it. One favour, if you have any questions, obviously you can ask questions on the chat and presumably other people will have answers for you. If you want to specifically ask me a question, if you could be so kind as to wait till I stop turning, I'll stop a couple of times for questions uh, because I do this on my own, I can't see the chat when I'm actually turning. And I think you, you know I said last time, I asked my wife and she said she would rather stick pins in her eyes. I think it's terrible. Mind you, I'd rather stick pins in my eyes than some of the hobbies she's got as well. <laughs> okay, so um, I'll change to the overhead camera now and show you how I'm going to mount this. I'm going to start trying to clean up the back end. Evening Lucian, Sean Tyndall, good evening. Uh, and James Boyett, good evening to you as well, and Steve Robbins, good evening. I think I've said good evening to everybody, apart from Mark, the gentleman woodturner. Good evening, Mark, how are you? Thanks for coming. Um, and Warwick Woodwork as well, good evening to you. OK, we'll change to the overhead camera now, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Now, what I've got in, in the headstock, I've got my chuck, I've got my gripper jaws wide open, and it's got to be a friction drive. A friction drive. I've got a bit of. This isn't Scotch pad. This is just a piece of um, scourer that you can pick up in any uh, big box store, as you say in America. Uh, or this is a, actually a Morrison's name dropping. Now I'm going to pre press that against the open jaws, and then bring up the tailstock. And uh, we've got the middle already marked from last time. Not really essential to have that pad there purely and simply because it's not finished on the inside. But if it was finished, you need some some form of padding to stop marking occurring on, on the piece if you finish the inside. Now we'll just spin him up and see if it's running true. Not too bad at all. We'll just take it back one more time and give it another go. You've got to do a little bit of fiddling with this just to get it right. That's not too bad. We'll give it one more go. Just to get it as... Yeah, it's not too bad. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is basically negative rake scraping and what I wanted to show you tonight was the various tools you can use to achieve basically the same result but 
some results are, or some tools I prefer to use than others. The first one you can use, which is fairly obvious to most of us, is the skew chisel. And you can use that as a negative rake scraper. So if I turn, now what we, what we are planning to do is to finish this, refine this and get it to a surface where we can sand and put a finish on. Now I have to admit there's a crack appeared here since the last time I had it on the lathe. I did do a little bit of cleaning up here um, just to get back into the swing of it as it were. So what I'll do now is turn the lathe on and we'd be turning at about 800 revs, 900 revs. I've got the tool rest at a height where the skew chisel is on the horizontal and if we go along this part here it's not quite level it's not quite round there and what you're doing here is using it as a negative rate scraper now when we get that nice and true you can see the nice shavings that are coming off Just very light cuts, just to get it to a nice surface. Now here you can hear it there, it's bouncing, so that's got to be, that's got to be leveled off. So that's one method. Now most of you know that I am very, very fond of the negative rake scraper. And this is a meteor piece of bar stock than the skew chisel I just used and it's grown I ground this it was an ordinary round nose scraper I ground this to a 35 35 grind one thing to remember if you're using it this way up and I always keep my grub screws pointing upwards when you touch up the edge you touch up the bottom bevel and that raises the burr because the wood comes down this way don't do what I've done a few times and approach the wood this way, your burr isn't there. You haven't got a burr, the burr's on the other side. So that is important too. Now being that this is a meteor bit of stock, I will have more, again the same thing, just on center. Now you can see the nice shavings I'm getting. Now we're approaching, we're coming off the night of the level part now and approaching the unlevel bit. So we just keep going until it, it's quite a slow process. So what I might suggest you do is have a look at Jimmy Clues while I'm doing this. <laughs> now I could use the gouge. Now the problem, the problem there is that I'm only wanting to take off a very small amount. And again, for the newer turner, it gives you more control. Now when you get to a bit like this, which is really needs a lot, you just gotta sit there and just work it back, work it back, and blend it in and get rid of that the high spots. And the high spots are created because it's not running through there's no need to rush just nice and easy does it and keep the tool on the horizontal and you can see the very fine shavings I'm getting and it's working very well I've got a couple of other tools I'm going to show you as well or a couple of other methods you can use let's just go you see here, up until here, up to this area here, we've got solid wood, so it's not a big problem. The, not the danger, but where you've got to be extremely careful is when you start going to this part here, because here you've got wood and you've got air, wood, air, wood, air. So there is where you've got to be extremely careful. You've got to be very light with your touches and you can see the ghosting. This is where speed is your friend because obviously the quicker it's going, the air and wood are 
coming round that much quicker, which means you've got less chance of getting a dig in. But you do have to be very careful. So when we get to that area, I'll show you what I do. Now the other thing you could do, of course, as well, nothing wrong with doing this way at all, you can do a shear scrape with your gouge where you would actually again have it on at the same height here and where, what you're doing you're shear scraping and you're you don't want that top wing to come in contact for obvious reasons you just have to you're just working off this wing here and you just very you keep as small a gap as you can between the top wing and the piece and you just bring it round. Now again you can see we're getting nice shavings as well, little angel hairs. That is a very effective method as well. The big thing there is, as I say, to be careful that you don't, when it's turning, when the wood is turning like this, you want that sort of a gap. Does the camera show it? Yeah, just about. But if you go this way, you're starting then to contact that top wing, which is what you don't want to do. coming on now we've got a, a bit of a ridge there but that's just on the part where the air is going to come up it's going to come come round each time so you have a choice of all these tools and I'll use some of them again the other the other thing is if you've got a carbide and I don't use carbide for turning but I do for hollowing now this is a little mini hollower a little six six millimeter carbide cutter now again as as long as your edge is at 45 degrees to the fibers it'll slice and cut the fibers as opposed to scraping them and the same thing works with a carbide cutter now if you lower the handle and get contact now you can see the shavings that I'm getting there. Again, nice little fine shavings. The problem with this tool is it's not that stable for this sort of a piece. But we only want light cuts anyway. So basically, from, from the, where the foot is going to be and, and this part here, we're virtually there as far as surface is concerned. I'll go over with a negative rake scraper in a moment. Now, for those of you that have only got scrapers, I only have one what I call standard scraper in my armory, and that's basically for uh, videos, if I'm doing a how-to video. Um, I very rarely use it. I always use a negative rake always put a relief bevel at least on the top edge because I find it more forgiving and also gives a nice finish. If you've got a standard scraper, and this one is 60 degrees I think, so the bevel is at 60 degrees, standard scraper, you can also use that to shear cut. I don't like the word shear scrape, shear cut, because we're going to turn the tool on its edge and we're going to approach the wood coming down here at an approximate 45 degree angle. So again, that wood is going to be sliced. The fibres are going to be sliced. So we'll just take that from here just to show you. I don't use this very often, but just to show it will work. Again, note the shavings that are coming off. Now there, a standard scraper, 
and those are the shavings that are coming off a standard scraper. So it also is a very versatile tool and a tool that you could use. Now I'm starting to go in or will start to go into uh, areas one thing i do want to show you and this is i'm not trying to promote it at all one of my favorite tools for this sort of a thing now is the simon hope heavy duty negative rate scraper it is a really big lump of kit and it is so stable um, for this sort of an operation and yes i am using it the right way up because a few people say oh you've got it the wrong way up again it's the same thing it has a negative rake as you can see there and again on the horizontal and just touch the wood now you can see there again really nice shavings all I'm doing there is touching the wood and it's such a heavy tool there is virtually no effort at all now i am only got my glasses on at the moment I'm now going to put my full face shield on and hopefully you can hear me um, because I am now entering what I call well I don't call it anything actually it's just an area where something could catch because obviously I'm going into air very shortly now what I want to do here you can see there there's a bit of a, a bump on this bit here and I want to smooth that around so we're going to be using this heavy duty one to start with um, now you can see we're bouncing there but that's not the air wood that's because there is a ridge there <clears throat> there is no way of rushing this I'm afraid so talk amongst yourselves The thing is what I'm also um, cutting through the um, CA that I put in there as well so it is not a quick process um, it's not really in my opinion an ideal subject for a live demo but I did get quite a few people asking so I thought well what the hell let's do it you can always as I say talk to yourselves All I'm doing is teasing it. That's all I'm doing. Now we started to get coming round here now. Of course, the the other other option is you could just power sand it all, which, uh, depending on how things go, might be the way that I go in the end anyway. So let's. You see, what, what I tend to do is change things around, use different tools. Cause I, and the other thing with the negative rate scraper, this, this one is a 4525. The, the thing is, with uh, negative rate scrapers, you have to keep putting an edge back on them um, on a regular basis. The reason for that is, is because the edge is more acute than a standard scraper, it obviously will, um, it obviously will dull quicker. Now, as I'm as I'm turning or as I'm moving wood from here I'm actually watching over here as well so I'm looking at the profile and looking at where I am now when I put this on originally 
uh, it was fairly balanced but it was a little bit out and you can see there this mark here is about there uh, which is about here on that side so it isn't perfectly level if you like and of course when you get to this area which is what I'll be doing now where I've got the cracks and everything else and this is where things could get a little bit out of hand because you're gonna have flexing although it's fairly thick walls it should be okay but I don't that crack does go through here but I have CA it but you never know so always be very wary and always what What's happening here? Um, excuse me, uh, could somebody let me know? Am I still still live? Can someone answer me? Can anybody hear me? Has something happened to the chat? Hello? <laughs> well, I seem to be live, but there doesn't seem to be any chat going on. Okay, what I'm going to have to do, I think, is end the stream and start again.